I'm Jim Collison and live from Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 4, recorded on March 29th, 2018. Theme Thursday is a webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths themes, one theme at a time. And today's theme is Activator. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during this webcast, we do have a chat room. It's available for you window right below the main video window down there. Just take a peek down there. Hit the login button. Hit guest. Take out the name where it says guest. Put your name in. Hit submit. We'd love to have you. Ask your questions. And remember, during these live programs, uh, there, there's live Q&A afterwards, only available in the live webcast. So if you don't get a chance to join us live, you might want to try sometime. We're taking the post show and doing live uh, Q&A afterwards. So stay around if you're listening live. If you're listening to the recorded version or have questions about custom strengths coaching solutions, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs. And you can also catch the video now downloadable audio. We call that podcasting. Available for you off our coach's blog coaching.gallop.com. One more thing, if you're on iTunes, rate and review us. If you're listening uh, or watching on YouTube, hit that little subscribe button or the bell. That way you get notified every time we go live or there's a new video out there. And you can like us on Spreaker as well. All that helps. Micah Lyburn is our host today. She works as a workplace consultant here at Gallup. Micah, welcome back to another Theme Thursday. We're excited about getting into Activator. Thanks, Jim. I'm pumped that I get to talk about Activator with you because I think it's one of the things I like the most about you. Mm, number five for me, but I really take advantage of it. I think Activator for me is one of those themes that above everything else, and some people would say that's woo for me, but I really do take advantage of my Activator, so I'm excited about talking about it today. Why don't we dig in a little bit, um, and let's do a little review on this thing. As we think about Activator, give us a quick rundown on kind of the basics. Sure. So just the, the, the quick theme brief for Activator. If you're an Activator, you're a starter a realizer, somebody, I think about that idea of realizing as you can very quickly take an idea and make it into something that's really going on. Uh, there's confidence in activator, courage. Uh, you might be a catalyst. It is about being in the moment, uh, taking opportunities in the moment, maybe even being an opportunist. Um, activator as a theme falls into that influencing category. And the theme itself really just is about the ability to take action. Um, probably uh, a lot more courage than others to begin. Uh, and it isn't just that I want to be busy all the time. It's not a self uh, piece as much as it is. I want to mobilize and 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 start a movement. I want I want let's get going. I, you know, and I often find that activators sometimes will joke if they're in your classroom, you can tell who they are because they're tapping their pen on the desk, <laughs> waiting for the next uh, the next uh, instruction or, or for you to get to where you're going. But I think the beauty of activator is when it becomes something that takes um, what what other folks may have been too afraid to begin and and takes that brave first step in order to to make something happen that otherwise we would have missed. Yeah, oftentimes no fear in those in that first step. That's fearful for a lot of people. Activators have that ability to just go out. We love meetings when it's it's ideation and then there's something that's get we can create some movement after the meetings. Um, I love those kinds. That's energizing for me when I can sit in a meeting that its intent is to get things going, right? That's when we're at our best. So Jim, as an activator, I got to ask, how do you know the difference? How, what does a meeting feel like when you know that the intent is to get something going? What would be the contrast of a meeting where the intent is to not get something going? Well, when I'm bored at the uh, that, that one, and then the one where we're going to get things going, I get very excited, right? But it it is the ability to kind of think through, I, I think for activators of like, what are the next steps I need to do? Or who do I need to talk to? Or who need to and, and influence? Now, some of those for me could be influenced heavily by Wu, right? Wu wants to win. Wu wants to get things going and win at the same time, right? So there's some influence to that as well. But certainly, I was just at a meeting this morning where we were getting a new team involved in this community-wide initiative that we have going on. And it was all about starting. And it couldn't have been a better meeting for me. Like it was 45 minutes of bliss. I was really only disappointed I had to leave early to come here. Not that I don't like this, but it was we were just having such a good time getting things started. So when I think of that, an activator in that, and just really enjoying that process or getting excited about or dreaming about sometimes the act of, of pushing things off center and getting them going. Pushing things off center. We're going to add that to our, to our theme brief there. It's, it's just pushing, I think, in general as well. 
let's let's spend some more time thinking about Activator at its best. So what else is in there, Micah? I think about what's the aspirational part. Who are you when you're at your best? You are probably taking advantage of opportunities that other people are missing. So not just taking advantage of every opportunity, but finding your 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 area of expertise or fine tuning your activator ear to hear those opportunities that are going to catapult you or your family or your organization to a better place. Um, I think also when when activators at its best, you are inspiring other people to take meaningful action, not just again pushing people off center for the sake of pushing, but being able to be that person in a meeting or in a a, a dinner conversation who says, "What's stopping you?" Uh, there is uh, the current season of Shark Tank. If you ever watch that, it's um in the U.S. here. It's a TV show on ABC where they've got a whole bunch of investors who listen to entrepreneurs sell their ideas, and then they look for whether those investors are going to invest or not. the The current season right now has a great intro segment with one of the sharks saying, um, "Why don't you? Why don't you just get started? Why not jump in? Why not uh, get this going?" And I think about that as a how Activator can be not just starting your own or starting your own team's progress toward a goal, but being that voice for others, almost being a coach or a, or a mentor who can inspire other people to take that first step. At its best, uh, Activator is also taking action on ideas that others are still considering. So think about that as uh, sort of sort of a dance. I think there's a there's a gracefulness to Activator when it's really at its best. It's this continual motion, always starting something. Uh, I had this idea this morning when I was listening to very first maybe theme Thursday. It was from 2015 and it was about Activator and listening to it in podcast form as I was getting ready. And we. I, this uh, this image came to mind of activator as being the kid who pushes the first domino in in a line of dominoes you know when when you're lining up dominoes in a big let's say it's it's either a straight line or it's an elaborate pattern the most fun is usually getting to be the person who comes back and knocks them all down so they've got this this ripple effect and they keep going i think great activators can be that person taking that first step or pushing that first domino in a place where they're working with other people who are still setting it up. So perhaps it's that that gracefulness of being able to know where to push and when to push and with what partners to push so that you can be starting things while other people are still working on them. And then maybe you can dance back and forth and be able to, to check in and say, hey, are we pushing too hard or are we pushing in the right rhythm or, or in the right direction? Um, but to position yourself as, as being the kid who gets to make that first domino fall down. Yeah, I kind of forgot that we started with Activator, which I know Kurt picked on purpose when when we yeah. were doing that. And it's funny as you mentioned that bringing back, but that a lot of the work we do here on Theme Thursday was act due to my activating. Like we that came from a call to coach where Kurt said we should do a program like this, and I said in the chat room went crazy, and I said let's do it. And we met with Kurt that afternoon, and I said what if it could be, and we just did it. Right, we got it going. That was an exercise in Activator. So. I also think activation has a lot of risk to it, Micah. I don't think we talk about that enough, that I think activators are willing to take the risks because there's a lot of risk in starting something mm -hmm. that hasn't been proven. And I, and I see activators jumping out, leaping out all the time. And so if you find yourself in trouble or in high risk situations and you're using, I think that's a great use of, of your activator. I think it works very well in those in those scenarios. What else should, if we have it, what else, how else can we use it? What kind of things can we do more of? Yeah, I an, think um, do more assisting. I took this one just blindly from from things that Jim talks about. So Jim, you always talk about the power of the assist and really that you feel uh, in many ways like that's what you're born to do is, is be this great person who can really set tee somebody up for greatness. Think about what Activator can do for others. So understanding that talent um, and offering it on purpose. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, if you just need a push to get going, that's what I can give you. And maybe even say, I'm not going to check in with you, you know, 10, 15 years down the road. I'm not going to be your project manager, but I will gladly, willingly be the person who who helps you get going. Let me, let me just say yeah, real quick, ahead. oh, Micah, that Kelly in the chat room, she says her activator is so strong that sometimes she's running out of steam halfway through. And and mm. let me say that I think that's a common activator thing where we, we're not yeah. designed to keep going. Like we need to move yeah. to the next thing. So partner with somebody. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but Kelly, find partners who can carry it on for you. That's the power of the assist. That's why I brought it back in here. 
the assist is me handing it off to somebody else and then me doing something else, not mm -hmm. continuing to hold on to those things. So what else can we do more of? Jim, have you gotten to a place where that's okay? Has, yeah. um, Fine. How did you do that? I think it was working here and seeing how those themes play out to maturity and that I could be okay with handing it off. I always felt like younger, the, the most successful people could take something from beginning to end and own the whole thing end to end. But that's not necessarily true. It's not true for me. I need, uh, when I pass the ball, I am being successful. And when I could redefine my own success that way and see that and measure it and count it and realize it, that was the power in being, it's okay to give it to somebody else and let them take it to the next level. Because I'm not designed for that. I'm designed to get it going. That person couldn't start it, but I can and hand it off to them. So there is a little bit, Micah, of measurement in that. I think people have to measure it and know and be okay. That's the whole theme Thursday right there. <laughs> it's what you said of, you know, when I hand somebody else the ball, that's me being successful, that you don't have to be, you don't have to measure success as being the one man band, right? It's, and so do you set up goals that, that are like, Hey, I want to start 25 things this year. Yeah. And I, sometimes like, I, mean, I know my goal is double everything, right? That has over the last year, that's been my, I need to double everything. And so, yeah, I kind of joke about that. I, I don't, cause I'm also an opportunist. I wait for the right conditions for things. I like, I have about 5,000 things that I want to start and I wait for the right opportunity and the right conditions to, to be there because I don't, I don't want to, sometimes I don't want to swim upstream. I want to, if I can wait to swim downstream, then I'll wait and I'll wait for that perfect opportunity when everything comes together, light the fire and then, and then go And mm -hmm. I'm, you know, part of the STEM ecosystem here in the city of Omaha and it's started and I'm trying, I'm, I'm like desperately like crazy handing things off. Like, okay, I've done my thing. Let's get other folks involved that are better at the smarter stuff. It's just my job to get it going. Mm -hmm. So it's handing off. It's also knowing who to hand it off to. Uh, and that's, that's probably some good management there with activator. And, and there's some learning in that. Like you, yeah. you, that doesn't happen perfectly. You have to practice that. You have to get better like any of these, right? You have to practice them to get better. I want to make note, Debbie in the chat room says handing off is okay. If you manage expectations, you get in trouble and others assume I'll just stop there. You get in trouble when others assume, but I would say Debbie, that that is the essence of strengths in general is how do you redefine success to uh, being, let me teach you what you're going to get when you work with me so that you can expect that to be, to be greatness. Here's what I can offer. Please hold me accountable for offering it at the very highest level. Um, and we can have a, a more well-informed, very open dialogue about how we can work together. So whether it's activator or something else, I think it's, how do you set yourself up to be the best version? Um, and that's really what we hope to be talking about here. No, sure. What else can we do? Micah, how can we um, raise our hand for these? Yeah. Raise your hand for more planting. <laughs> just what, you know, think about perhaps what, what Jim just mentioned being involved with, with the STEM ecosystem. Uh, that's not just a play on words because I said planting, but that's something that he cares about where he looks for, how can I help them start? Um, think about aligning that even to your values or to your mission. What is it that you can begin? Um, and don't position, position your seed, don't position yourself to be more than the seed sower. It Say right up front, Hey, I'm going to get this started. And then I need somebody to come tend the garden every day. I need somebody who's excited about uh, the obligation to check milestones and to and to keep things growing uh, to follow that metaphor. But communicate clearly that you have fulfilled your obligation once people are on track, once people are running. That also means um, do more figuring out how you can hand things off very cleanly. Um, maybe you can raise your hand to say, hey, I know how we can begin. Uh, try, try to say, here's where somebody else can take this. Uh, learn to delegate really well and, and find ways is to connect that action to your goal. So um, I, if the plan doesn't work, I found this, this great quote, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but never change the goal. So how can you talk about, hey, what do we need to start instead? Or what do we need to shift to? Again, coming back to that, that ability to dance and always position yourself to be the one who says, I know what we need to do next, or I know what action needs to be taken. This is going to be one of my favorite questions uh, this season, but what do I ask for? Like, what do I need? What best supports me? Ask for access to a team. Um, ask for better understanding of who plays which role. That's going to help you with that delegate uh, idea. It's going to help you inspire folks. I think ask for who's great at what at what jobs. Because again, if you come back to your idea of being that person who can help push somebody off center, who can help create some momentum in folks, you can do that if you can individualize, and that's something that you can you can learn about. 
Um, I would also ask for a fast paced environment where there are high expectations to deliver. That doesn't mean you have to work for a fast paced company. Uh, that means within the environment that you're in, look for the lanes that are swimming faster. Look for the places where people are used to having quick turnarounds or quick updates. Um, I think you're really going to find that if you can keep starting things and not be in a place where people are, are used to perhaps more deliberation or even more uh, more checks and controls, if you can have a little more autonomy to get things moving, that's going to be a great environment. Micah, for me, uh, this idea of this permission to begin, I think, is something you need to ask for as well. In other words, I have learned that when sometimes when people are talking to me, I'm like, do you want ideas? Do you want solutions? Do you want to get started? Is that what you're looking for? Uh, because if you're not, I will I will not turn on the activator jet. Like, mm -hmm. I, I can do that. I can turn that on for you. But I, I found that it's really, really important I ask permission right? It's like, what are you looking for from me in this conversation? Would you add anything to that? I think it's also uh, thinking about the long-term relationships that you're building. So looking for uh, going back to partners who you have already delivered with, uh, partners who trust you, partners who know that you might make them uncomfortable at the beginning because they might have a little more hesitance or a little more fear or a little less comfort with risk. Um, but if you can go back to those partners who you've already proved, you, you have a proven track record with, I think you grow the permission, you grow the autonomy, you grow the, um, the acceptance that, hey, yeah, Jim might start earlier than I wanted him to, but he is going to deliver. And so that's okay. Yeah. And I have a partner that I, well, you guys know it's Dean Jones. He's on the call the coach series with me all the time. Dean will specifically say to me, Jim, I'm going to tell you something and I don't want you to activate. Like he knows me that well. He knows that if he tells me some things and, and it's great. And sometimes I'll even ask him, do you want me? He'll tell me things. Do you want me to activate on this? Like I can move on this right now. And so it's that clarity, right? That we have in there, the, the clarity of purpose, the clarity of partnership. What are we intending here? That's the sharpening of the ax, by the way, in a relationship. It's, it's, it's not the doing, it's the asking. Yeah. It's, it's defining how do we want this role uh, to come together and, and what could it look like? You know, we worry a lot these days uh, as activators. It doesn't seem like we have things that we should worry about, but what uh, could we worry less about as activators? Um, well, gosh, everybody worries about everything, don't we? Um, this is just who are you not? I think worry less about knowing the details before you begin. Um, your magic is in beginning and being confident without all the details that you think you might need. Uh, I think we're probably uh, accustomed to, or maybe taught that we need to know everything before we jump in. Um, we're taught to research things. We're taught to write essays. We're taught to, you know, interview stakeholders. Worry less about that and pay more attention to your own self and what your own talents are telling you. If you're in your gut, you believe that this is the, we're ready to go, then, then go. Find ways to help people, set people at ease with that as well. So you might think about developing your own vocabulary of questions that encourage action or questions that shift the focus to the action rather than to the anxiety about the action. You might think about questions like, hey, what would it take for us to get going? Or how can we test this out? Um, or what are we missing? You might even think in some circles about, could we pilot this? Or what if we try? Um, and think about what resonates. Pay, pay close attention to what sets people's anxiety uh, a little bit down. Uh, I, I think that's going to help help you run, uh, but but don't try to be the person who just owns the whole thing from, from beginning to end. I think a question I've been asking a lot lately is how do we know we're gonna be successful? So, okay, we're gonna start this thing. And maybe I'm bringing a team along with me. And it's been a little maturity to say, how do we know we're doing the right thing? And when are we going to check to know we're doing the right thing? This may be an area where in you know, where activators oftentimes just start without knowing that. I've had to put some, uh, some checks and balances in just to say, when will we know we'll be successful on this? Because that is important. It's also important to me to know when I need to start pulling out. Like, okay. What's the next success level for these individuals I'm working with? And at that point, can I start pulling back? Because I need to go do something else. Mm. Um, I even mentioned in the chat room, I think um, something about like, you know, an activator may like doing a variety. Now I have a ranger, you know, a variety of projects. I have a ranger which heavily influences that. So yes, for me, I like being involved in a lot of different projects. 
I don't necessarily know if that's all activator. I think there are some activators who can be very content in being single threaded, who can be very content in one thing at a time. Um, again, those other themes kind of kick in there, Micah, but I, I think it's really, really important for activators to know because we can move so fast. I say I'm a firefighter, not a farmer. I am rushing to the fire, right? <laughs> Did I go to the right fire? Yeah. <laughs> put, you know, am I putting the right stuff on it to put the fire out or whatever um, for that analogy, you know? Do you, do you find that you respond well when people kind of push back? Do you like that, that sort of iron sharpens iron pushback on should we start or how should we start? I do. I do love the debate. Um, and, and I don't know if that's a strength or a theme. Uh, my family, we debated a lot uh, in our, in my family setting. And so I was used to that. I enjoy conflict, which is, which, and not angry conflict, but really thinking it out or working through the very, you and I do this all the time in working through what this season four has gone through. I don't know, four rewrites, probably five. Yeah, season four got a little bruised. <laughs> I mean, just, just with your, with you being out and then all the conversations we had back in December, my activator though, kept coming back to it. I kept pinging you. You mentioned last week, you, I, I pinged you. I know I'm not supposed to email you, right? Breaking the rules. No, I know I'm not supposed to email you, but Micah, we need to get moving on this. Right? I think there's that, the big talent of activator is, um, putting it in a place where the urgency is needed and being able to tell people why the urgency is needed. I think that's something you do really well. You even did with, with this season, Jim was you were the one who reminded me we need to get moving and here's why, or, you know, we need to get something out there and here's why. Um, and I think that maybe there's a depth to activator that is not just being the person who makes the team take a step, but educating the team. Being think, think about being an action consultant or an urgency consultant, being able to help people see the bigger picture of when when we take action, here's the benefit we get. Yeah. Uh, Mickey says, I see Maximizer in that for you, Jim, as an activator with lots of other influencing themes. Totally. I agree, but I have activator in a friend who has harmony and doesn't see it that way. Totally. Like this is the beauty of this, right? Beauty, We're it? talking about it from our point of view and how it works for us. But as an individual, as a coach, there's lots of variables, right? It's just right. It's really, really important to get to the success factors. Like what has made you successful in the past and how can we take advantage of this? So often we get stuck on the definitions and we try to box people in. If you're doing that, yeah, we're, we're missing the point, right? The point of this is how do we be successful with it in the future? So as we, what we can say, I think about you is that the, the, the element of you that is true to activator is that you want to get stuff going. The element of your friend, Mickey, who has harmony is that she probably wants to get stuff going. Now she wants to do it in, in a different way that Jim does, but the truth about activators is let's get going. Let's create yeah. something. Let's move it. We uh, have added this segment for, for this season. And we talk about really these, the to-do list, the things you can do, the action items, things to take away from this. Micah, as we think about working with Activator, even though it yeah. says Achiever in the notes. Sorry, that was my note that I didn't <laughs> change last week. You almost tripped me up there. I was like, uh, are we? Anyways. I'm just um, testing you. What kind of things, what kind of homework can we give our audience? If you're working with someone with Activator, expect urgency. Expect that they're going to have a desire to act and they're not likely going to want to tolerate a constant what if. Um, and that if you need to be in that contemplative place of what if throw them a bone of like a couple things we can, we can move forward while we're still thinking. Um, I think you can also expect a, a big energy when that you're going to feel when you're, when they're present. So when the activator on your team is there, um, there it's an influencing theme. You're going to feel it. it. Those are the themes that you wear on the outside that you inject into other people. Um, so if you're really ready to be unstuck with something, invite an activator. <laughs> You're, you're going to feel it. And I think it's going to help and ask him, like ask him or her, what is, what, what, you know, what's working for you or how can I, how can I do this in a way that makes you the most successful? Totally. That, that's such a powerful question that I think we miss. We, we get in our planning phase and we get in these things and we start dictating as instead of saying, Hey, we've got this thing. Tell me how you can, how, tell me how you're act. I need activator right now. Tell me how you can contribute and then what you need, you yeah. know, tell me how you can do that. Set those expectations clear. I love that. How, how can we recognize uh, an activator? 
Uh, celebrate the progress that is currently being made. Remember that for an activator, getting things started might be their biggest sort of glory moment. So if they have to wait until something has been wrapped up, it could be a lifetime until we really give them the celebration and the recognition that they deserve. So I think about reviewing not just whether we've hit our goal, but how much closer we are to our goal. Uh, don't just think about what's been completed. Celebrate what's what's currently in motion. Maybe celebrate the courage it takes even to start a few things. You could even look and get real specific about, hey, what kind of things did did this person have to align before we could even take step one? What were what were steps negative three all the way up to zero? Because those are things to celebrate as well. Talk about the change that that an activator has created. Um, talk about where we are now compared to where we were. Um, using Theme Thursday as an activator example, I don't know that Kurt thought it would actually happen in that moment on a chat box where he said, we should have something called theme Thursday. Um, he talked, he, and a lot of my friends talk about talk it that way all the time. Hey, we should without quite so many roots um, of, of taking action as maybe an activator does. It's like you're sending out these balloon ideas that have strings on them and an activator can grab one and say, okay, here you go. Here's theme Thursday. Um, and look at, look at what we've created now. Look at how many hours of professional development we have. Um, I think that's a fantastic way to sort of celebrate and recognize the work of an activator is to talk about the effect, um, talk about what it's done for folks. Don't wait to praise, um, praise them for a project that's finished, praise the action that's been started. Yeah. And Debbie says he was using, I think this is in, in reference to Kurt. He was using ideation, which is awesome. I was too. Then yeah. I, we got it activated and, and what a great partnership in that. And then he sat down and we, we you know, I remember that lunch, and I said, hey, we could actually do this thing. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> like I wasn't afraid to try it. We already had something working. Let's throw that in there. And we we cleared it with some folks to make sure we weren't, you know, we, we were doing the right thing. But man, for me, that felt, that lunch was way better than the work itself. Like I, that <laughs> moment of launch, like I, what I love, I can watch this hundreds of times on YouTube is just when a rocket, launches in that first burst of energy that comes out, you know, and the smoke comes out and the water comes on. Uh, for me, that's the most powerful moment of the launch. Like my heart races when I watch something like that, then it gets up into flight and it's like, ah, all right, it's going to go somewhere. Who cares? Like, you know, <laughs> I, I, it's the first five seconds. That's the most powerful. I love those pieces. How can we, and this is a great question for me. How can we stretch, right? How can we help you know, activators develop. I think part of it is to remember that influencing themes are going to be inspired by audience. So help an activator understand their audience. You're going to stretch them that way by speaking openly about what external effect our work has. Um, give them access to teams and to projects outside uh, maybe their typical sphere of responsibility. So think about, again, inviting them to be an outside voice purely to lend their 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 lens on how something can be executed. Um, or, or help them develop language for why action matters. Instead of um, why, where do you want to be in five years? Maybe you ask them, what are you doing today that will make a difference in five years? Because it's putting it back into that very real understanding that the first five seconds of the launch mer matter more than going to Mars. <laughs> so if you're talking to them about what it looks like in space, it's not the same, not going to be the same productive conversation as what are you doing right now? Micah, we have some challenge statements that we want to kind of bring in as we think about some homework for individuals to do. We had a we did a pretty good job last week of taking this to Facebook. I'd like to see a little more conversation, to be honest with you. Facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach is the group that will do that. Just ask to be invited. I'll let you in. What kind of challenges? What are your assignments for our oh. listeners? Awesome. I'll also tell you, we got quite a bit of traction on Instagram on these challenges too. So I've recreated only the challenges as a post on Instagram. So if you forget what they are, at Strengths Talk is our Instagram feed. You can go check it out there. Three things we'd like you to do if you are an activator in the next week. Number one, before your next meeting ends, ask out loud for action items, even if it's not normal to the people in that meeting to hear that. <laughs> you might say, hey, Micah told me to do this. Um, I got to ask what are, what are our action items? Micah? <laughs> and why is she asking you this? <laughs> I don't know. I saw it on Instagram. I don't know. It was there. I'm hearing voices. She's, she's very fun. And she asked me to do this. Number two, take a five minute break to list all the new goals that you'd like your team to tackle. 
Um, I think that that hones in on the fact that activators usually aware of opportunities that other people are missing. So just write them down. Take five minutes to think about all those new goals that you wish we were we were tackling. And number three, help somebody else take a big first step on a meaningful project. Um, you'll be able to do this if you're if you're paying attention to it. So be on the lookout for um, maybe maybe an opportunity that somebody else could take. It's sort of that relationship building aspect. Make sure you do all of this um, in the next week if you're an activator and let us know how it goes. Come back to, to our Facebook group or to our Instagram or just send us an email, uh, coaching at gallop.com. If you put, I don't know, I'm making this up right now. Uh, here's my activator ideation. Put challenge in the subject line. We'd love to hear how it goes. Yeah, right on. It's, it's always nice to get your feedback. Uh, I, that third point, Third, I, third, third. The third point is super important because you get to interact and help someone else. You want to talk about amplification, the power of two, being able to uh, to help. I mean, make a friend for life. Find someone who's stuck and get them unstuck. Right? Help them push through. It's gonna. By the way, it's gonna be super uncomfortable. They're gonna give you a million reasons why you can't start. You might have to force the issue. I'm just saying, all those things might happen uh, when you're doing this. But it is a powerful, powerful, and, and I'm in some situations here where I help people get things started, and I just really appreciate it. Micah, anything else you want to say as we kind of bring this in for a landing? Don't forget, if you're listening live, post-show, your questions, we're going to dig more into the chat room. But Micah, anything else? Yeah, today... I saw one of our good friends used to work at Gallup, Kristen Lohr, um, has a quote that has made it to mantra band. And uh, I think we it's appropriate here based on what you just said, Jim, about, you know, you, you might make people a little bit uncomfortable taking that first step. Um, hers is about growth, but I think it, it really uh, speaks to activator of how you might make people uncomfortable. But again, you're a catalyst, you're, you're an opportunity. And it says growth is uncomfortable because you've never been here before. Uh, you've never been this version of you. So give yourself a little grace and breathe through it. That's from Kristen. Oh, I think it works cool. for today. Yeah, it does indeed. Well, we will remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center. Just gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your questions and comments. If you'd like to activate and be a guest blogger, maybe you've been trying to get off center on that one. You got to four to 600 words, something original locked up in your head. You'd like to write it down. Send it to us in an email, coaching at gallup.com. Put guest blogger in the subject line. We'd like to review it and an opportunity maybe to get on the coach's blog. How cool would that be? You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program as well as all the past ones. We call those podcasts are available for you. You can listen to this offline, although why would you not come live? Why are you listening to this recorded? You could join us live. I know many of you have good reasons, but maybe next week activate on getting Maybe there. they're not that good though. <laughs> it's, it, they are good. <laughs> they should be here coaching all those resources at coaching.gallup.com. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, we have a complete list of all our courses that lead to that. That's at courses gallop.com. Don't forget the Clifton Strength Summit is coming up as well. July 16th, 17th, and 18th here in Omaha, Nebraska. The uh, early bird is ending April 5th. That's really, really close. Now, it's pre you might be listening to this after that. That's okay. You can still come and you can still join us. And if it's after July, chances are we're doing another summit. So head out to cliftonstrengthsummit.com and get all the details out there. Join our Facebook page again by searching Gallup Webcast, or you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. And we want to thank everyone for joining us today. If you're listening live, don't go anywhere. Stay around for the post show and that will say a goodbye, everybody.